consider these two coils of wire. We name this coil of wire coil 1 and the other coil coil 2. Coil 1 has an n sub 1 number of turns and coil 2 has n sub 2 number of turns. So initially there's a current flowing through coil 1 and the current flows in this direction and if we use second right hand rule it generates a magnetic field in this direction. Now let's name the magnetic field generated by coil 1 as B sub 1. And since coil 2 has a cross-sectional area, it experiences a magnetic flux due to the magnetic field of coil 1. Let's name this magnetic flux as phi sub B2 to denote the magnetic flux experienced by coil 2. Now let's name the current that flows through coil 1 as I sub 1. Now based on Faraday's law of induction, if this current I sub 1 of coil 1 changes with time or it is varying, then there will be an induced EMF on coil 2 due to coil 1. So apparently, the magnetic flux experienced by coil 2 is directly proportional to the current of I sub 1 because this flux is the dot product of the magnetic field vectors and its area and we know that the magnetic field vector is directly proportional to the strength of the current. So essentially, the magnetic flux experienced by coil 2 is directly proportional to the strength of the current of coil 1. Now this is the relationship if we assume that coil 2 has n sub 2 equals 1 or the number of coils in coil 2 is just equal to 1. So this is the relationship if we assume that coil 2 has a single loop. But apparently based on our figure, it consists of many turns. So if you have n sub 2 turns, each turn will experience a magnetic flux that is additive. So essentially if we have n sub 2 turns, we just have to multiply this relationship with n. So again, this magnetic flux is directly proportional to the strength of the current of coil 1. So in order for this relationship to become an equal sign, we have to multiply this with a constant and let's represent that constant with m i sub 1. Since the EMF induced on coil 2 is due to the change in current in coil 1, we name this constant as mutual inductance. I can write this in terms of m. So I'll end up with n. I'm sorry, by the way, this is the number of turns in coil 2. n sub 2 phi b 2 over i sub 1. This constant m is actually called mutual inductance. The SI unit of mutual inductance is Henry symbolized by capital H. Now based on the same reasoning, if in case coil 2 is the one with current and initially coil 1 doesn't have any EMF, if coil 2 has a changing current then it will generate its own magnetic field and if that current is changing then the flux passing through coil 1 also changes and this will result to an EMF. We could also calculate a mutual inductance for the flux passing through coil sub 1. And this mutual inductance is due to the changing current in coil 2. Now it turns out that these two constants are equal so you can actually calculate it using the flux on coil 2 or the flux on coil 1. The EMF induced on coil 2, let's represent it as E sub 2. Using Faraday's law is equal to negative n, the number of turns on coil 2 is n sub 2, times time derivative of the flux on coil 2. Now let me rearrange this and put n sub 2 beside the flux. Now this term here looks familiar. So basically, I can replace this with m i sub 1. m here is a constant, so I can put this outside the derivative. So I now have an expression for the induced EMF on coil 2 based on mutual inductance, which is 
negative m d i sub 1 over dt. So using the concept of mutual inductance, I was able to derive an expression for the induced EMF based on the time derivative of the current in coil 1. So in other words, using the concept of mutual inductance, if coil 1 has a varying current, then I'll be able to calculate the EMF induced in coil 2 if we have a value for mutual inductance. Similarly, the EMF induced for coil 1 has the same structure. There will be an induced EMF in coil 1 if there is a varying current in coil 2. So this is the induced EMF due to mutual inductance. Let's try to solve some problems involving mutual inductance. This problem is from OpenStax University Physics Volume 2, Chapter 14, Inductance, Problem 31. A coil of 40 turns is wrapped around a long solenoid of cross-sectional area 7.5 times 10 raised to negative 3 meters squared. The solenoid is 0.5 meters long and has 500 turns. What is the mutual inductance of this system? And B, the outer coil is replaced by a coil of 40 turns whose radius is 3 times that of the solenoid. What is the mutual inductance of this configuration? I represent the solenoid with a cylinder instead of a coil like this for easier presentation. This solenoid is actually inside the coil but I'm just showing them separately for clearer presentation. Based on the given, the solenoid, this solenoid has a cross-sectional area of, I'll just put A sub 1. I'll just put a subscript 1 for all the variables related to the solenoid and I'll just put a subscript of 2 for all the variables representing coils of 2. So here the cross-sectional area is represented by A sub 1 equals 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3 m squared and its length L is equal to 0 0.5. I'll put subscript 1. L sub 1 is equal to 0 0.50 meters. And the number of turns for the solenoid is 500 turns. So I'll just represent this as N sub 1 equals 500 turns. So for coil 2, N sub 2 is obviously 40 turns. In part A, we are asked to find or to calculate for the mutual inductance. So no matter what system I'll choose, I'll be able to calculate the same inductance. So I'll just assume that the solenoid is the one producing the magnetic flux through the coil 2. For part A, the mutual inductance is equal to the number of turns of the coil, n sub 2, times the flux on coil 2. Recall that we represent this with phi sub b2 divided by the current of the solenoid. Now to calculate phi sub b2, recall that it is equal to b dotted to dA. Now from our previous lectures, notice that the magnetic field inside the solenoid is equal to mu naught Ni, but the magnetic field outside the solenoid is zero. The flux experienced by coil 2 is just the dot product of the magnetic field inside the solenoid and the area that we are considering here is just the cross-sectional area of solenoid because outside the solenoid the magnetic field is zero and this means that the magnetic flux is also zero. When solving this problem the solenoid is inside the coil. I'm just showing them separately for clearer presentation. So again the magnetic field is B and essentially we have this cross-sectional area A sub 1 and the magnitude for that product has cosine theta and the theta is the angle between the magnetic field vector and the area vector. But then again, the magnetic field vector and the area vector are parallel to each other, hence this is actually cosine 0. And again, the area here is the only relevant area that will yield to a non-zero dot product with the magnetic field vector because outside this area the magnetic field is zero so the magnetic flux is zero so i'll end up with b a sub one in the expression for the magnetic field of a solenoid n is actually the number of turns per unit length so i can rewrite n in terms of capital n the number of turns of our solenoid and remember that we represent this as n sub one and it has a length of n sub one the solenoid has a current I sub 1. I'll just transfer this expression here. So this is actually equal to mu naught n sub 1 I sub 1 A sub 1 over 
L sub 1. Now that I have an expression for phi, I can plug this back to calculate for our mutual inductance. So our mutual inductance is equal to N sub 2 over I sub 1 times this expression which is mu naught N sub 1 I sub 1 A sub 1 over L sub 1. Notice that the currents here cancel out and the numerical values of each variable here are given. And the numerical value of the mutual inductance is 3.8 times 10 raised to negative 4 Henry. So in part B, if this outer coil is replaced by a coil of 40 turns, meaning to say it has the same number of turns but the radius is 3 times that of the solenoid. So essentially imagine we have a bigger coil. So what is the mutual inductance of this configuration? When we solve this problem, this solenoid is actually inside this coil. Even if I increase the radius of coil 2, the only relevant flux is the flux with an area A sub 1 or the area with a non-zero magnetic field. This is because the magnetic field outside the solenoid is zero. Hence, even if I increase the radius of coil 2 while the solenoid area is the same, the magnetic flux remains the same and hence the inductance is the same. So for part P, this is also the value for the mutual inductance. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!